Hi guys, today I'd like to show you our countershaft cover. It's just a super lightweight skeletonized billet aluminum countershaft cover that houses the clutch slave cylinder. Uh, the kit comes with a mounting plate, the dowels that offset the cover, and new stainless steel hardware. Um, this kit, it's important that you run the OEM spacer when you're mounting your slave cylinder. You want to be sure to have this spacer behind the slave cylinder when you mount it in to get the correct spacing between the slave cylinder and the throwout rod. So when you first unpackage your kit and lay it out, you'll notice a few things. We've got the kit laid out here. The longest bolt in the kit, 107 millimeters. It goes in this hole right here. The next bolt is the shortest kit in the kit. It's a 60 millimeter bolt. Um, these two bolts on the very far corners are 70 millimeter, and this bolt that goes through the cover and the slave cylinder is a 75 millimeter bolt. And that's the way they have to be arranged in order for this all to fit up properly. The one thing you'll notice on the dowel pins, I'm gonna pull this one out real quick. There are two dowel pins that look like this on one end and they have a counter bore on the other. Those two dowel pins are designed to go in this top position here and this bottom position here. So once you've got these two dowels located on the locating dowels on the cover, um, you can start with the longest bolt, just slide it through, slide the dowel over it, just kind of slide it into position. This, the reason this bolt's so long is it goes through the cover and into the engine cases. Then I'm gonna take our two 70 millimeter bolts and just slide them in and it kind of holds it in place for you. Um, I'm gonna just start each one of these. I'm not gonna tighten them up, but just get them started. Now that I've got those three started, I'm gonna go ahead and slide this one in. That's why it's important not to tighten it down so you can get the rest of these in place. This is the 60 millimeter bolt. Oops, let me go ahead and get it started. And at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and run these all the way in and I'm not gonna tighten any of them up until I get everything fully seated. Okay, so now I've got all four of these bolts and dowels in place and I've run them all the way in until they snugged up and then I backed them off each account, a half of a turn so the cover has a little bit of play. So next, I'm gonna take the slave cylinder, put the OEM spacer on and start the 75 millimeter bolt through. Then I'm gonna hold this spacer back here in place and run that bolt through the hole and guide everything into place. Once that's in, take your 20 millimeter bolts that are supplied with your kit and go ahead and get those started. You may have to push that in a little bit to get it started. It's important on these that you walk them into place gradually so put a little bit of, you can see how when i tighten it the slave cylinder is moving around you want to keep the slave cylinder as flat as possible as it's going in so rotating around in a circular pattern will do that for you and just keep walking this in until it's fully seated Obviously, we're using a slave cylinder that has no clutch line. We haven't run our hydraulics on this build yet, but it'll work the same way um, as you put it into place and tighten it up. Once you've got everything in place, go ahead and snug everything up. We recommend about six, seven foot pounds of torque on all these. It's plenty. So the thing we like about this cover, number one, is it's much lighter than the stock cover. Two, it gives you access to your counter shaft sprocket and chain. So for gear changes and things like that at the track, it's much more advantageous. The other thing 
is <laughs> this is an area of the bike that gets neglected a lot. A lot of times bikes come in and we pull the counter shaft covers off and they are just completely packed with debris and grease and you name it. It's, they're just full and it's an area that you should keep clean if you want to prolong your chain and sprocket life. Um, so having this uh, all exposed, uh, it's not out of sight, out of mind anymore. It's right up in your face and you'll have more of a tendency to keep this area maintenance. Um, you probably also noticed we're running a different cover on this bike. This is a GPZ 900 cover. Um, we're going to run the GPZ 900 clutch cover as well. It's just a upgrade and a change we wanted to make to make this one a little different. Um, it's got the sight glass here instead of the clutch cover and the oil fill is on this side too. Uh, warning to anybody that's running this cover, this oil sight glass is actually at a different height and as a rule of thumb, we run these at the, uh, at the very low line of the oil level, but don't take our word for it. Get out your ruler, measure from the split in the oil pan to the stock sight glass on your stock cover and then do the same on this side and make your own determination of where you'd like to run your oil level. So that's it. That's our uh, skeletonized counter shaft cover. Um, hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Keep your questions coming. We'll keep building cool parts and cool videos for you guys. Have a great day and we'll see you next time.